Does your meditation practice feel like it's not working? Instead of floating like a feather, does it feel more like you're pushing a rock up a hill? If you can't get into a regular meditation practice or always feel like you're failing at it, I've got seven common mistakes that you might be doing. So by the end of this video, you'll be reassured you're no longer doing the wrong things while meditating and have more confidence that you know what you're doing and maybe you're even on the right path. Mistake number seven might be a little controversial, so stick around. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I've got a question for you. Did you set New Year's resolutions like, oh, say, get six pack abs? So let's suppose that you did go to the gym and did the nutrition every day. How long would it take for that six pack to appear? The next day? The next week? Or the next month? Two months? Three months? How long more? We can all agree that it takes time, right? So why would your meditation practice be any different? We're so used to expecting immediate results, but cultivating a practice takes time. How good have you actually gotten at something that you've only spent 10 minutes a day on? Just to put things in perspective. So mistake number one, expecting immediate results. It takes time to cultivate a practice, so give yourself that time. Would you go on a first date and expect to get married the next day? Sure, it's possible, but not very probable. Similarly, having lofty goals like being completely stress-free, problem-free, and attaining enlightenment are great aspirations, but not realistic expectations for a meditation practice. Being attached to these outcomes is also the opposite of the point of meditation. Instead, think of meditation as a journey, not a destination. It's a tool and not a quick fix to all of life's problems. So to prevent mistake number two, let go of any unrealistic expectations or attachments to outcomes and allow yourself to fully experience and appreciate the present moment. It's a common misconception that meditation is about having a completely empty mind. If that were the case, we'd all be Zen masters by now because our brains are constantly coming up with new thoughts. The point of meditation is not to stop the thoughts from coming because the mind is full of thoughts, but to notice when thoughts come and then gently guide our attention back to the present moment. It's like playing a game of whack-a-mole with your thoughts, but instead of using a hammer, you use your breath or sensation. So to combat mistake number three, the next time you find yourself frustrated with the barrage of thoughts during your meditation practice, celebrate. You've just caught yourself in the act of thinking and given yourself the opportunity to refocus your attention. If you want to learn more about the myth of no thoughts in meditation, I'll link to a video I did in the description below. You can go watch it later. And on your way down there, don't forget to hit that like button. The next three points are interrelated and focus around time, that precious resource that we all don't have enough of. Let's see if any of these relate to you and let me know in the comments below which one of these situations is familiar to you. Skipping meditation practice when busy or stressed. Hmm. That's like skipping a shower when you're super sweaty or skipping a meal when you're hangry. It's just not gonna end well. The same goes for meditation. When you're busy or stressed, taking a few minutes to slow down and breathe can actually help you become more productive and focused. It's like hitting the reset button on your brain. And let's be real, you'll probably waste more time scrolling through social media or staring at your inbox than you would actually meditating. So next time you're feeling overwhelmed, don't do mistake number four, skip your meditation practice. Take a few minutes to breathe, refocus, and get your head back in the game. Your future self will thank you. Not finding the right time to meditate? Oh no, that's like missing out on a delicious dessert. Sure, it may take some effort to carve out a few minutes from a busy schedule, but the benefits are worth it. First thing in the morning or end of the day are usually a great way to start or end your day or bookend your days. 
and I usually like a 10 minute session in the middle of a busy workday too. Think of it as a mini vacation from your daily stresses. I block these times in my calendar so it's also a visual reminder to do this. So to combat mistake number five, next time you catch yourself saying, I don't have time to meditate. Remember that it's not a chore. It's a treat for your mind and body to rest. Don't be afraid to experiment and find what works best for you when it comes to finding the right place to meditate. Whether it's a cozy armchair by the fireplace or even in your parked car, there's no need to limit yourself to a serene mountaintop or the perfect Zen garden. So to prevent mistake number six, just make sure it's a safe and comfortable spot and you'll be on your way to a peaceful meditation practice in no time. Now comes the potentially controversial last point. That meditation requires sitting cross-legged on the floor, in lotus, and to hack it out no matter how uncomfortable you get. In reality, Finding the most comfortable position for you is much more important than potentially hurting yourself. We're all anatomically built differently. Lotus position is impossible for some people anatomically. So whether it's sitting in a chair, lying down, standing up, or even walking, any position can work for meditating. In fact, using different positions depending on what you need that day can help you connect better with your needs. So mistake number seven, don't worry if sitting cross-legged on the floor doesn't work for you. Experiment with different positions until you find what works best. And remember, meditation is all about finding peace and relaxation. So keep a lighthearted tone and don't stress too much about finding that perfect position. I go much deeper in exploring all of the different meditation positions in this video, so if sitting cross-legged is impossible for you, you might find a better alternative over there. If you like this video, I've got more like this in this Meditation Explained playlist. I'll link to it below too. Smash like, subscribe, and I'll see you over there.